This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to talk about a potential global ban on flipping coins. How many lives have been ruined by this simple but oh so corrupting act? And we're not talking about trading crypto here, but we're actually talking about something known as coin flipping, coin tossing. This is when you take a coin, you flip it in the air, and you see if it lands heads or tails. A lot of people do this very nefarious practice. It's a kind of nefarious activity that often precedes illegal acts like gambling. For example, do you know where your children are right now? Even your youngest children might be flipping coins right now without your knowledge in some dark room of your house with the doors closed. There are also online ways to flip a coin, which you may know about. You can just Google generate a 256-bit number binary. You can come up with a bunch of these generators. Here's one. And I just used it to generate a 256-bit binary number that looks like this. That's a really big binary number. And you know what else it is? It's also a Bitcoin private key. And I should say right here, don't use this private key or all of your Bitcoin will be stolen from you. Don't use any of the private keys that I'm posting in this video because they've now been compromised. But this large binary number is a Bitcoin private key. And using only a pen and paper, I can use this private key to generate a Bitcoin address and then receive and send Bitcoin. And I can also convert this private key, this very long binary number, to a 24-word recovery seed to make it easier to remember. It might look something like this. Again, don't use this recovery seed. If you use this recovery seed and send Bitcoin to an address generated by it, you will lose all of your Bitcoin. So I wanted to talk about coin tossing, coin flipping in the context of what you might often see in the news as described as self-hosted wallets, unhosted wallets. This has been something that's been the target of regulators in the EU and the US. We've heard Elizabeth Warren talk about it in her latest bill that aimed to extend the Bank Secrecy Act to various other things in the Bitcoin and crypto space. And she also talks about unhosted digital wallets. And I often get this question, what is an unhosted wallet? What is a self-hosted wallet, etc.? I already showed you an example. Right here, I am showing you an illegal unhosted wallet or self-hosted wallet. It's actually not illegal now, but it could become illegal at some point in the future. Now, as you saw, I generated this 256-bit number using a computer and a website, but with just a little more time and work, I could also have done it using a coin, a penny, a nickel, a dime, a quarter, a coin of any type, where I flip it and heads is zero and tails is one, for example, and then I just, I keep flipping it. I flip it 256 times and each time I write down a zero or one. And in order to do this, I just need a coin, a pen, and a piece of paper. So if you're gonna put into effect a ban on unhosted wallets or self-hosted wallets or self-hosted addresses as the EU and some US regulators wanna do, what you're doing is you're just putting a ban on tossing a coin, rolling a dice, and writing down some numbers. It's a really stupid idea. It's not enforceable at scale. And remember that any ban on unhosted or self-hosted wallets must also include strict regulations that prevent people from putting together 12 or 24 words in a row. That's obviously a criminal act as well. If I flip a coin, generate a private key, and a Bitcoin receive address, I actually don't even need to be online to receive Bitcoin from you into my quote unquote unhosted wallet. I can convert the Bitcoin receive address to a QR code and I can paste it all over town. So if you wanna ban unhosted wallets and self-hosted wallets, in addition to banning coin tosses and lists of 12 or 24 words, you're also gonna to need to ban digital and physical QR codes and pieces of paper. For example, if there are no Bitcoin miners left in the US or Europe, this is not going to happen. Mining pools are nodes online, etc. But if this were to happen, if the internet were down in the US or Europe, just to take a really extreme situation, I can actually sign a Bitcoin transaction using my private keys. I can mail that signed Bitcoin transaction in the physical mail as a QR code on a piece of paper that can then be scanned by a Bitcoin miner or mining pool in Asia or Africa or wherever it is. So all I would say is good luck, Christine Lagarde. Good luck, Elizabeth Warren, banning things like coin tosses, coin flipping, rolling dice, writing numbers down on a piece of paper, and QR codes. A note to viewers though, before we end this video, please be very careful if you do this in practice to generate a private key. I haven't shown you all the steps, but if you are gonna do this, use a precision casino die or dice. Don't use an old unevenly weighted penny. Make sure you're tossing it in a truly random manner. And definitely don't use online quote unquote random number generators from untrusted 
websites. These may not be truly random numbers. And the other very important thing is never generate the randomness yourself using your brain. Don't just write down a bunch of zeros and ones. It will not be random enough. Also, don't go to the BIP39 word list and come up with your own list of 12 or 24 words and just string them together. You probably won't do the checksum correctly, and also you will not have a truly random private key if you do that. So be very careful. If you do want to use randomness to generate a private key, though, this is a nice thing that Cold Card, the hardware wallet, allows you to do. And I'll link to this in the description notes below. But I just wanted everyone to remember the takeaway from this video is when you hear talk about regulators banning or restricting self-hosted wallets, unhosted wallets, what they're really trying to restrict is people flipping a coin. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.